magic makers, Mommy Rebel here. So, I have a question. Have you ever wished you had special abilities? Woo! <laughs> well, in this book, we learn about these children who were genetically manipulated to have those abilities. And today I'm sharing with you the review of C.J. Peterson's first book to the Sands of Time trilogy. This is Appointed Time, and I got to get one of the first hard copies of this book and I was so excited to let you guys know that I'm going to review it. So here it is. I met CJ actually in person at Comic Conroe and she was an awesome person so I was so glad to get to know about this new sci-fi Christian series that she wrote because I love the whole idea of characters who have special abilities and stuff. My daughter's really into My Hero Academia so she calls those quirks. but. Um, <laughs> I got to read this one and I had absolutely no bias because even though she has some great books right now out that she's done, I'd never gotten to read any. And so starting this one for the first time, I didn't know her writing style and I didn't know how it was going to go. I just liked the idea yeah. of the series. And so I'm going to say right now that if the rest of the series follows the way that this book went, that I absolutely love it okay. This was a great book. I was pleasantly surprised with the characters. So I'm going to try not to throw too many spoilers in there for those who haven't read it, but I'm just going to say for the first book in the series, I'm ready for the sequel. And guess what? It is out now. She just released book two to the Sands of Time, Race Against Time, which is the second part, obviously, and it just came out. So I'm going to put the links down below. Definitely check out this book first, obviously, because it's book one, but get them both because if you get this one, you're totally going to want to know what happens next. Now, like I said, I'm not going to try to put too many spoilers in here, but I'm going to tell you guys kind of what's going on. This is my non-spoiler portion of the video, okay? So, this book was great. I loved it, okay? Absolutely loved it. I'd never read any of CJ's books before. It's my first time to read her works, and so I wasn't quite sure. It was a totally unbiased opinion, and... I just fell in love with it. Like the storyline, the characters, even the writing style, she did a great job. So she definitely kept my attention um, and I'm ready to see what happens in the next book. So, okay, now this review, fair warning, is totally full of spoilers. So <laughs> I'm gonna tell you guys kind of what's going on. She gives you, you know, obviously like information about the book so you know about it. But some of these characters you're really gonna like. Now here we've got on her cover, this is Holly. And this is Blake, and they are, they're raised like twins. They're two of the four children that you know of from the beginning of the book who are born with the genetic manipulation that causes them to have the special abilities. And Blake has almost a mixture in some ways. Like, I was a Twilight fan. Don't, <laughs> don't be mean. <laughs> but um, he's kind of got the, the mixture between the ability like Jasper and Edward in a sense, it seems like to me from that book, because he can read people's minds and their thoughts, their emotions, but he can also affect them, which I thought that was a neat twist. Normally, you know, people who are telepaths who can read minds, they can sometimes put thoughts into other people's minds, you know, just to kind of mix it up. But the ability to affect their emotions, I thought that was a cool twist to his abilities. And um, Holly, she's got Right now, I'm thinking there's going to be more that she's going to introduce more to because she, in the book, it refers to how her powers are stronger than she realizes, which her ability is telekinesis. So she can move things with her mind. And my favorite thing is um, early on when you first find out about their abilities, they're not sure what they're going to be. Okay, hold on. Let me back up. So I've mentioned what this book's about before. We've read some and I'm going to share chapter one. Thank you, CJ, for letting me do that because that's exciting. And that's, yes, voices, background sounds, best I can do. And hopefully y'all will love that. And that'll give you a chance to get to know this book better even. But it starts off, um, there's been this experimenting of genetic manipulation with the babies. And this is the first ones who have actually been successful, you find out. And Dr. Noah Roth is the one who is in charge. He's the scientist. It's his DNA, you know, his seed, so to say, that he's the father of the babies, basically. Let's put it that way. And, um... He's not much of a father, you find out later, because he is just not a nice person. <laughs> and that's putting it mildly. But, so these four children are born, and two of the people that work with the experiments that Dr. Noroth is doing, Ben and Grace, 
they decide that they're going to help save these babies because they figure out that they're going to be lab rats. They aren't going to be raised in a way that's going to be positive at all, basically. And the reason that it gets them figuring out that things are really going wrong is that all the moms from the experiments start dying, basically. So these kids don't have a family that they have to be accountable to because the doctor actually is their father. And so it's kind of a scary thought, you know, because there's no telling he's been working for 20 years, I believe it was, to get this experiment to work. And so who knows what's going to happen to these kids, right? So they take two of the babies. They can't take them all because they have to sneak them out. And they end up changing her name from Grace to Hope, which was the mother of Holly, this little redhead little baby here that they get. And um, they find this little town in Texas and they kind of try to keep to themselves, but they want to raise these kids in a way that their powers aren't going to be a threat to others and they don't even know what their powers are going to be yet. So it's, it's interesting. And I love the part where when they're babies, their powers first start to sh Holly and Blake, they're obviously being raised like brother and sister, but they're actually raising them like twins because they're born so close together. And I think that's cool. They get this cool connection between them. They're kind of like twins anyway, but, um, I think it's because he can read her mind, <laughs> but she's in the crib. They haven't shown any powers yet. And all of a sudden they're talking and in the hallway, they're like, well, what's that? And there's a bottle floating down the hallway. <laughs> so I thought that was like a really good way. It had that kind of Jack Jack feel of like, surprise, they have powers, but they knew they were coming. They just didn't know what they would be. So, <laughs> um, and as they get older, there's more characters introduced into this. You know, the couple's not married. And I'll be honest with you, I was totally shipping these two. You know, they rescued the babies together. They're raising them together. They're working together well. I thought, okay, Ben and Grace, which she changed her name to Hope. So Ben and Hope, I'm like, yeah, that's the ship right there. They're going to get married. They're going to raise these babies. It's going to really bond them. And it does bond them. But, spoiler alert, they don't end up in a ship. Okay. <laughs> I said I wasn't going to do spoilers, but I totally am. But I have to say that because of this, because I was actually at first, I was not fond of the idea that they were about to end up with other uh, someone else. Um, it's actually Hope, the mom of the kids, the one raising them like their mom. And um, she ends up, the sheriff finds out because, I mean, he's actually a pretty smart guy. I can, you can see that in his character and that's cool. But he figures out something's off and he thinks it might be something bad so he wants to help them but ends up he becomes kind of part of it part of the secret of the whole thing because he figures out and the only way to get him to not expose their secret and put them in danger and the babies especially in danger is because they let him in on what's going on i mean they're just honest with them and uh you get to really like the character and he ends up with Hope, him and Hope become a couple of Wyatt and Hope or Wyatt and Grace, you know, <laughs> and um, it actually, it, it becomes a good ship. You're going to hop on that ship and you're going to be like, yeah, let's sail. Okay. Is that, can I say that? Is that weird? That's weird. Okay. <laughs> Hope and Wyatt, uh, they become this, this ship of their own and it's good. Like you will, you will like it. But then what got me later on is, you know, okay, so now Ben's alone and because Wyatt, the sheriff, is so observant, really, you know, he's, he's observant, so he figured out something was off, and he ends up on their secret. Well, they ask him to look for anyone new in the town, keep their eyes open for everyone who's coming in that's new to the town, because it's a small town that they picked, which was pretty smart, right? Because they're trying to keep the kids safe. But come to find out, the sheriff's secretary is new, and she's really nosy. She keeps trying to get in on stuff. And he does actually draw her. He pulls her into his office and he talks to her. And come to find out, she works for a detective agency kind of thing. And it's interesting because it's like, I was not thinking she was going to go the direction she did with the secretary. But I ended up liking it. it. She gives them the choice, or Wyatt, the sheriff, gives them the choice that she can stay in the town or she can leave basically, which I mean, it was a strongly worded ultimatum to her in a sense, you know, because he was 
already becoming protective of the family. I think they're already becoming kind of a couple. And so she does actually end up deciding to stay in the town and being real, like being herself. And so for another name changer, she changes her name, what she was using, Sherry, to Alex. And that's, that's her real name. And ends up, um, Alex later on, <laughs> I admit, I was not won over with her. She was hanging out with the family and the kids, and they didn't tell her any of the secret. Like, she didn't know what was going on exactly, but she knew that there was something, and she, she thinks she, she thought she knew what it was, but she didn't know the whole story. Well, someone comes and pops up into the scenario with the family who used to know them, and it's actually an ex-boyfriend who apparently like, is bad news. And, yeah, this is totally full of spoilers. I'm sorry. I said I wasn't going to put spoilers. I, I lied. I'm a liar, apparently. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, I gotta, I gotta share this because it was good. But, um, this is my favorite, this is one of my favorite things, though. And it's, it's interesting. So, I'm not going to read it, like, straight out of the book right now. So, the thing is, is Alex ends up really loving this family and she she becomes protective just like Wyatt like the sheriff like they both have like this really strong connection with the Ben and with Hope and with the kids and it's it's interesting like with Wyatt I was hesitant because I'm like ah uh, you know I know that they're together now and I don't want Ben to be alone necessarily but I wasn't sold on Alex you know the secretary who used to work for the you know, it, it was like, I wasn't so quite sure. But then when the ex-boyfriend shows up, Alex gets wind of it from the sheriff and finds out that he's a danger to them. And so by page 76, I'm not going to tell you what happens exactly, but by page 76, like, <laughs> whenever I read what she ended up doing, I literally was like, oh my gosh, what? Alex? <laughs> and everybody in the house is going, what? <laughs> but... I was surprised, but I have to admit, it kind of sold me on her because it showed, like, she's not exactly what I thought she was, and I knew she was supposed to be a tough cookie, but, you know, she was like, I'm going to protect this family, and, okay, I got to respect that, <laughs> despite, you know, anything else, but the weird part is, is at that point, like, she doesn't show up in this book again. I I'm just going to say, and she doesn't go away, like, she doesn't leave them. So I know she's going to show up in the next book, but I'm kind of worried about her now. <laughs> um, but there, there's going to be, I'm, I'm, I'm like 100% sure at this point that there's going to be a shift between Alex and Ben. And so it's going to be Alex and Ben and Wyatt and Hope or Grace. Anyway, <laughs> but um, as the kids get older, <laughs> they actually encourage the relationship for the parents to have, you know, because they know that they love them. It's like, it's a, they're raised really well. They did a good job with them. They, you find out that they teach them to use their abilities, like with positive reinforcement and stuff. And they really do love these kids. They really come to love them. And that's cool. They're the whole, they have this whole family scenario. It's almost run like a business in a way, but they really do love the kids and the kids love them back. So it's, it's cool. I like that. And I even came to appreciate that they were expanding the family and the kids, as they got older, literally confront them in a way. They're like, listen, we know that you're not happy because you want to be together. And we want you to be happy. We realize, you know, that you've been like this for us and it's going to be okay. And the kids are cool. I like their attitude. They're, they're homeschooled their whole lives because the parents are worried or because Ben and Hope are worried that they don't know how they're going to act or how they're going to be around other people, how they can control their powers even. And even... When the book ends, like, Holly's still learning to control her abilities. But, I mean, they're... It, mm, okay, you've got to get this book. <laughs> Let me just say. So, what ends up happening, though, towards the end, they finally actually, for the first time, go out with the other people. They visit the church with their mom. And it's kind of an intense scene. Holly has never heard some of the stories. And she takes it, like, really serious. And she even looks around and she's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you guys aren't listening. <laughs> They're just whispering and laughing. They met the other teens and they weren't quite sure what they thought of them. But I'll get into that in a second. <laughs> so they go through the church service and she gets really emotional. So she actually like 
displays some of her ability for a second there and they're like whoa chill <laughs> but they after the church service they go to eat with the some of the teens from the church and you get to know them a little bit better you know being homeschooled it's funny because like some people are worried it's going to go one of two ways and my kids are homeschooled so i can relate but i've got one of each i've got one who's a social butterfly and one who's kind of chill to himself you know their own attitude and they kind of remind me of my kids <laughs> which i think is funny because holly's the more outgoing in the sense and blake because he can like read people he seems more chill and relaxed about stuff because he knows what's going on so i think that's interesting the the way that their attitudes are i like how they play off of each other they really do seem like twins and so they're counterparts to each other i guess in a sense well right after all this getting to go to the church and meet the kids and hang out and getting to know them a little bit they go to leave and all of a sudden there's a game changer thrown in because they meet the other two babies who are now their age and it's it gets real interesting real fast let's just say that like you're gonna start having action thrown in there and you're gonna be ready for the next book when you finish this one because i am <laughs> so they're going to basically have to leave this town to go save their parents let's just put it that way <laughs> and i i like what's going on right now they get attacked basically and they have found them so basically like there's a confrontation the two sets of brothers and sister kind of counterparts come up against each other and they actually it's kind of cheating because they have men with guns with them and so their mom is getting taken away and they don't know where their dad is and so it goes it, it gets very action packed you know at that point well holly spoiler alert uses her power and knocks the other kids out and they get to use blake's power later to find out what their lives were kind of like and so they go into the hospital and they sedate them because the kids realize these people have powers like us and they're dangerous so you need to watch out and they let the sheriff know and since he knows yeah <laughs> he, he's he's prepared which was which is cool so that was a good thing well because the other guys had gun holly's hurt now so his sister is in the hospital too while these two new ones that they've just met deanna and adam are the other two siblings that they meet or the other two counterparts that they meet they're not actually siblings but they kind of all pair you know they're paired up like siblings in their own way but getting to see into their minds he learns that um they're not alone basically like there are multiple multiple ones there are s several of them and it's funny because you see like the difference between their lives and Holly and Blake are totally raised in this loving, caring environment, whereas Deanna and Adam are from this whole experiment point of view. Honestly, yeah, I mean, they were lab rats. They were raised really brutally, too, because if they didn't agree to do stuff, they were abused or their counterpart was abused to manipulate them. You know, they would even lock them in solitary confinement, basically, like prisoners. And these are little kids, you know, so it's really sad. Whenever they see their lives, like he looks through their memories and he sees this. Um, so the whole thing is, though, towards the end, they know that they're going to have to go to this laboratory. They're going to have to save their parents. And now they have an inspiration to go save these other kids. So they need Deanna and Adam, honestly. Um, they need their help is the idea. So I love this twist. <laughs> Blake uses his ability to implant memories into their minds of what their lives should have been like. He takes their lives, their positive memories, their happy moments with their parents and they're using their powers and stuff and he gives it to them. It's almost like a gift. That's how I see it, you know, because they're worried about how they'll respond to it, but they need their help so bad. They're trying to figure out how can we get them to help us because they were raised to hate them. They were raised knowing that they were going to eventually basically going to have to kill these kids. And 
and it's, it's harsh and it's cruel the way that they were raised and you see that you know it's like I'm not going to go into all the details but I have totally spoiled this <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what ends up happening this from that point on there's more to it but they do make friends with the kids that they met at the tertiary thing and they get pretty close to some of them so look for a little ship in there probably and so now I'm ready for the next one all right so definitely you will love this story it is well written it is good characters and I think you're gonna love it if you like the idea of special abilities and stuff and characters too you're gonna like where this is going I can't wait to see what happens next so definitely get your copy link down below if you haven't had a chance to yet hit that thumbs up and uh, make sure to hit that subscribe so you can keep up to date I have books that I share I have vlogs that I share we're going to some special places coming up so don't miss out hit that notification bell so you can keep up to date on all the new magic and I'll be sharing the first chapter of this one with an immersive reading so coming up soon so don't miss that love you guys remember let it go and keep moving forward have a magical day bye